Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video and as you can probably guess by the title I'm going to talk about working with toned paper. Now over the last four years including this year I've done mermaid on toned paper because it was something that I had never done before and I thought it'd be a really good way to challenge myself working with a different equipment and learning with it as well. I've learned a lot over the years and I thought I'd share the four of my favourite techniques and things to use on toned paper and this is what I highly recommend. Now the first one is coloured pencils. Now coloured pencils depending on how opaque you go with them um, you can build them up really nicely on toned paper and I would highly recommend working on with coloured pencils on toned paper because you can really make your colour shine. Now when you're using uh, coloured pencils ideally you're going to want a soft coloured pencil. The reason being is waxy coloured pencils they're they're not going to be able to build up a lot of texture whereas soft colored pencils they're really going to help now what i mean is polychromos and prismacolors are going to be perfect for this situation they're really soft building colors and you're able to build up a lot of technique and a lot of texture using these colors in general the only problem with is with these pencils is they can have a quite a high price point um, but they do work really beautifully on toned paper. Another cheaper recommendation that I can recommend especially for those who are in the UK is WH Smith pencils and um, they're really soft and buttery they're not quite as soft and buttery as polychromos and prismacolors um, but they're a really good cheaper alternative if you want to try out using coloured pencils on toned paper. Of course you can use these um, with other materials which is what is absolutely fantastic about working with coloured pencils. You can really create a nice bold look on top and for those wondering yes I am doing mermaids and all of these mermaids are going to be ice cream themed mermaids um, and this is because this is my Patreon um, month exclusive um, thing that we will be working with. I'm going to be doing ice cream mermaids all throughout my Patreon month but I thought it, this would, was a really perfect way to be able to show you guys what really works well with toned paper. Um, the pigment on these in particular, so the polychromos and the prismacolor, I like to use them both together because um, I have quite a collection of both of them now. I personally really like them both, I don't have a preference. Um, the only problem that you do find with coloured pencils is you end up with a sheen on the paper. Now, um, for a lot of people, this isn't distract uh, distracting in any way, shape or form. But when you're building a lot of layers on top of each other because they are wax-based and oil-based, it is going to create this sort of like shiny layer on top. After I've put my base down, I'll build a little bit of white areas up with acrylic paint pens. This is the Thule Art Pen. Um, this is just to boost those uh, white areas up and create a sort of boost in that area. Now you can do it where you have a pencil crayon base and then build on top with acrylic markers to really get the light areas that you want. But you can see what I mean about that sheen. If you don't want that sheen, apparently uh, maybe coloured pencils are not for you. But they work really nice on there and pop really beautifully and I highly recommend it. Another technique that I like to use is alcohol markers as a base. Now working with alcohol markers on toned paper you are going to notice that your colours are extremely dull and this is because on toned paper they sink into the colour and because they don't have a white background now if you're using alcohol markers on white paper or very light paper your colour is going to be much brighter but because the toned paper already has a colour it sort of sinks into there however you can create really nice tonal effects using alcohol alcohol markers. Now I tend to use alcohol markers as a base and then build up using coloured pencils and of course acrylic pens as well. It's a really good way of mapping out what colours you want to go where and especially if you want a duller tone as your background it really works. I tend to use these as like my base colour and my background colour so that I can create that illusion of sort of distance in a way. Um, 
you'll see what I mean here is like I'm putting down my base color and it is so dull in comparison to what the color would normally be now alcohol markers can be really bright and really colorful and you can use this with any alcohol marker but what I recommend is building up on top using your colored pencil or using your um, paints or whatever it is that you choose to use on top this is a really good way to be able to boost those colors up now you'll notice um, when I use the colored pencils um, it doesn't have anything to lean back on so it is just a colored pencil that is your base if you don't want to use your colored pencil as much or if you don't want to have an entire area covered in it this is a really good way to be able to build up the texture that you want and to be able to build up color on top as well it is one of my favorite techniques I use it a lot it's a it's because you have your dull colors into your bright colors and I personally really like this technique a lot of people may not but I think it's just a really nice technique to be able to build up texture um this is a method that I used throughout all of my 2017 where I used really cheap paints because at the time I used hobby craft paints on my 2017 mermaid um as well as alcohol markers and I was able to create some really nice effects on that and throughout my 2018 mermaid I used a mixture of colored pencils and alcohol markers throughout mermaid and was really enjoying the texture that I built through it and every now and again with my mermaids um, it has been a technique that I keep going back to because it's just a really nice way to build up from your dulls to your brights and really have a lot of texture in there and I know I keep repeating that but it's just really important I would say for like 3d structures um, of, of an illusion of 3d to be able to build up from there plus the colored pencils look absolutely fantastic on top of the alcohol markers you can see the duller areas and the brighter areas and like what I was able to build up and of course on top I'm using a little bit of acrylic uh, paint marker just to brighten those areas that need to be a little bit brighter I've been using acrylic paint markers a lot as my highlights lately uh, mainly because because they are so bright and so nice to use that I just highly recommend them to a lot of different people um, it's been something I've been playing around with lately and I will be doing an acrylic marker review and saying whether or not they are worth playing around with but this honestly I, I love this technique I just I think it's fantastic and recommend it to anyone so here's a few looks at the bubblegum moment and as you can see um, because we put the alcohol marker down we didn't have to use as a lot as colored pencil therefore it doesn't have as much of a sheen to it but the next technique i'm going to talk about is acrylic paint markers now acrylic paint markers the most commonly known one is the posca pens and um as popular as they are they can be fairly expensive and there are quite a few cheaper brand um, acrylic paint markers that are out there I'm fairly new to acrylic paint markers so I cannot tell you the best recommendations that I have that are out there but I'm using currently Posca pens and Thule art acrylic pens now um, I will say with Poscas and with acrylic paint markers, you're going to end up with quite a graphical effect. And the reason being is um, when you're trying to build colours on top, you can build colours on top, but you have to wait until they dry. And you'll find that sometimes it can be quite difficult to blend unless the marker is already wet. It's a very interesting technique. I'm still trying to learn a lot with it. In fact, for Mermaid, I told myself that I was going to use acrylic markers a lot uh, for Mermaid this year anyway. I was using acrylic markers a lot to try and really work with the paper and try and see what I like and don't like about it. Um, and with toned paper, the thing that's nice about it is you can use a lot of areas that will already be your colour base. Um, and it's it's about negative areas about what you're going to fill in and what you're not going to fill in. Now, if I was trying, if I chose like a brighter mermaid for this, the acrylic markers would look a lot nicer. But I really wanted to do a caramel drizzle um, mermaid, and that's what she ended up being. So a lot of neutral tones. But I thought this was a really good way to show how the paper can really sing and really behave very nicely. In between all the areas where I didn't want the brown paper to shine, I build up with coloured pencils. Um, 
using a very very light layer as my base this is a way so that the acrylic markers when they are put on top they are really bright and really colorful and i'm also using a lot of the toned paper um to try and get the image through so you'll see that i built a very light layer of yellow this is just to make it tonally different from the background brown that is that um if i'm honest acrylic markers work really beautifully on toned paper in fact all of these techniques work really really well with toned paper um there's a few things i'm going to say that don't work with it um but you can see how bright the colors are and i do recommend with uh with acrylic paint markers um if you are going to build up textures if you want to use your alcohol markers use your alcohol markers as your base you can build up the colors on top but i always recommend using your alcohol markers as your base and build up on top with the acrylic markers and then afterwards use colored pencil the main reason why i'm saying that is because colored pencil once it's down it has a waxy layer on top of it and unfortunately it can be quite difficult for a pen to grip on top so i always recommend using the colored pe pencil as texture afterwards so the last technique that we're going to talk about is gouache now i am terrible at using gouache so um it isn't going to be the most perfect example here but gouache works wonders on toned paper out of these three it is possibly the brightest um, but since i'm not massively great with gouache it's one of the techniques i tend to avoid um, mainly because i feel like i don't have a lot of control over it but i'm showing you here how wonderfully it pops on toned paper um, it just makes the colors seem really bright and really colorful even better than on white paper so I highly recommend using this on toned paper. You can also use acrylics. Uh, I would recommend acrylics as well if acrylics is your sort of thing. Um, but the one that I would not recommend is watercolors. Much like using alcohol markers, um, watercolors are not going to be as bright, unfortunately, and not as opaque on toned paper. Um, this is because when it has the lighter background, the colours, because they are so transparent sometimes when you are layering them, they have nothing to sit on. Um, I've tried using watercolours in the past with Mermaid, and it does create a really nice dull textured event, uh, effect, the same effect that you would get with uh, alcohol markers um but unfortunately they just don't seem to do as well on toned paper gouache works wonders highly recommend it acrylics really nice to use oils i would recommend always when you are using oils either use a wooden or a uh, actual canvas the problem that you have with a lot of wet materials is um a lot of toned paper is um craft paper it's built for uh, scrapbooks it's built for crafting it's not really heavy duty um you can get some that will really hold waters very well but it's not really built for water-based things um what throughout many of my mermaid books you will notice that the paper is buckled whenever i'm using wet materials and this is simply because it is not meant for wet materials um, a little bit here and there like with this piece in particular it worked really well because there wasn't a lot of water involved but the more water you use on toned paper the more it's going to buckle that's why i don't really recommend using heavily water-based materials but overall my four recommendations are if you're using alcohol markers use colored pencils on top to brighten up those colors same with watercolors use colored pencils on top it will really build up that texture really make it look really beautiful especially if you're going from a very new if you want to use a very muted tone another recommendation is acrylic markers acrylic paint acrylic ink it, it works really really nice on there and the colors just look really nice and pop really beautifully colored pencils especially uh, if you are um using uh, ones that aren't very waxy so very soft um pencils will work really nice on toned paper because you're able to build up really nice texture and another recommendation is gouache it works really beautifully i highly recommend all four techniques to use on toned paper there's a lot of stuff that i've learned over the years that does and does not work with toned paper and it has been really fun over the years to experiment doing the toned paper with mermaid so i really hope that this video has been somewhat helpful because i do get asked a lot what um 
materials work best on toned paper and I think the results really speak for themselves you can see like what works really well what doesn't work really well and what techniques you can use overall um, personally, my favourite techniques is a mixture of using coloured pencils, alcohol markers and acrylic paint markers at the moment. That's possibly some of my favourite techniques to use and it's a lot of what I've used for this mermaid and it's something that you do see me use a lot in the Sunday streams as well, um, mainly because they really pop really beautifully on toned paper and gouache just looks really bright and really vibrant and I highly recommend all four of these techniques. If you have any more questions about working with toned paper, let me know in the comments section down below. Since I've worked on toned paper now for four years for Mermaid, it has been a challenge each year and I've learned a lot from it. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and it's been somewhat informative for you. And um, here's some fan art features that you guys have tagged me in. You're all such talented people. If you want to be featured at the end of these videos, use the hashtag Stay Creative with Safira Lou on Twitter, Instagram or even tag me up on um, my discord i think we're going to start doing discord featured soon as well i hope you all have a wonderful week keep drawing maybe subscribe if you wish to see more content but as always folks stay creative <laughs>